Today we have here um, Henry Rosado, and um, I just want to say a little bit about Henry Rosado. Um, I know Henry for a long, long time, and I know Henry because he is a musician. I know Henry because one of um, because the Rosado family is very yeah. known because they help and contribute a lot in the community and in the West Side community. And during the course of Bacon Criollo, I was looking and I was like trying to look for veterans and they said, you have to go and see Henry. And <laughs> when I walked into his home, <laughs> I was very surprised with what I found. So um, today I have the honor to have Henry Rosado, a member Rascal. of the Syracuse community that not only have contributed with instruments and lifting our like um, parrandas navideñas Para. <laughs> and many homes with music and life uh, um, and many homes with many festive and, and yeah. parties. Um, oh yeah. Yes. But yeah. he also mm. have join the, you know, um, help the community yeah. and our country, contribute yes, to our sir. country through the military. So I was very surprised. Oh. So <laughs> Henry, tell us a little bit about yourself. Sure. <laughs> um, you know, I'm, you know, Henry Gonzalez Rosado. I, uh, I was born in Puerto Rico. Yeah. And with my family, we only have one aunt that lived in Syracuse back when I was 10 years old. Well, my mom decided to go, wanted to go to the United States. And, and we came, you know, to the United States. I was in fifth grade. I've been since in here. I, I had a hard time. I remember I couldn't didn't know no English. You know, like any kids, you know, went to school, didn't know no English. But, but I, I learned and I got used to having friends, you know, here, and you know, I grew up, graduated from high school here. I went to the Marine Corps, and then you know, after that, I won't join the Marine Corps. Then I came. I was in the reserve most of the time. I grew up in the community. Everybody knows me as a musician. You know, because I like playing. You know, play trombone. I like singing. Play the congas. And everybody knows me around here as a musician, and, you know, and I, I love dancing. Everybody, there is a dance, I'll be there, I'll be there <laughs> dancing salsa, and, you know, but, you know. When, when I, when I. When I joined the Marine Corps back in the day, yeah, it was because, you know, I had my brothers, in, in college, you know, my, and both of my brothers were in college. You know, I was the youngest one of the family, and my father couldn't afford, you know, to send me to college either. And he was, you know, we grew up at very strict. Most my father, and my uncles, he they were military. My father was a Korean vet, and his brother, Octavio Gonzalez, he was a Korean vet my whole family. I was the first one in, after, you know, my father's side to join the military. And, you know, because my father didn't have no money to send me to college, and my grades wasn't that good. Yeah, I just, I went to Fowler. I graduated from Fowler back in 81. And, you know, and my father, you know, and I decided, nobody told me to join, no recruit came to me, and yeah, because I, I didn't know what to do after college. I wanted to go to college, because I wanted to become a musician. The reason I joined the military and the Marine Corps is just to be in the Marine Corps band. I like the nice uniform, and I like to, <laughs> wanted to play. Yeah, that's what I, the reason I joined the military. But, you know, back in the Cold War, when I joined in, it was Cold War, you know, going on early 80s. You know, it was pretty 
hectic in the countryside, and they needed tankers, you know, to get there. I, I, I was the right size for a tanker. My recruiter convinced me, oh, you should go to tank. You know, they took me to the Matadale. They had the Marine Reserve there. And, you know, I got into a tank to Site C, and I fell in love with it. <laughs> and then, you know, and then uh, after I joined the Marine Corps, most of, like I said, most of the time was reserve. I went to the, for a couple of years, active duty, you know, went to tank school and tank engineer. I was a uh, mechanic inclined. I love getting greasy, getting dirty. You know, this is me. Yeah, I'm not a two guy, a guy to be in an office, but I love the outside. And when I joined, it, it was, you know, like I, I was telling, let me go back a little, you know, my brothers follow in my step instead of me following their step. You know, the same reason my, my oldest, you know, on my father's side and my mother, you know, my oldest brother, Walter, you know, he went to college, he wasn't doing so well. After his second year of college, he joined the Marine Corps. And so on and so on, you know, he joined the Marine Corps because I was in the early program, you know, because I joined when I was 17, early program. And yeah, I didn't get to go till the following year, till in June. When my brother, you know, he joined the Marine Corps it was in March, and we met up in book camp. <laughs> yeah, well, when we joined up, and we was, you know, like anybody in the Marine Corps, yeah, it's, uh, you know, they, it was scary. It was especially you being young, 17, joining the Marine Corps. You know, the toughest part of being in the Marine Corps is boot camp, you know, because, you know, it's, very well, and I'm so proud I made it. I thought I know it's, I did, but uh, I did it. I made it. I oh. became very influential in me going into the military. Um, you know, I remember when we was little, we used to go into the woods in Puerto Rico, you know, hunting birds or whatever. He used to make us march, you know. Where we going, going, you know, as playing, and I love marching. Yeah, you know, he made us go. He used to sing cadence for us <laughs> while we, you know, marching down the ro you know, road, and it was very. And, you know, I became me, me and my brothers. Like I said, I'm the youngest of of three, but in my father's side, I got a, you know two other three two sisters and a brother. And all three brothers from my mother and father's side were in the military. My father was a Korean vet. Like I said, he started in the Navy as an airplane mechanic, you know, down, you know, in the carriers. Then after he did his time, um, he, he did his time in Korea. He was stationed in Panama, you know, during, after, the Korean War, he was stationed there. Then when he came, got out of, the, out of there, he joined the Army Reserve in Puerto Rico. And he spent, overall, he spent over, close to 20 years in the military between Navy and Army. Wow. So your father was very influential, and then you decided to join. Yeah. And then your brother decided to join. To join. Then join. my other brother, yeah, after he, you know, like, I it started, like, I didn't, my father didn't have enough money for me to go to college. He started with my other brother, you know, he, then he could make it. And then my other brother, Lester, he was the one that at his third year of college, he ran out of money. And, <coughs> you know, then the, he joined the Navy. He joined the Navy, and after he did his, did, then he switched to the Army. And he ended up as a, a major. He started from the bottom. He went to college. He loved it. I'm the, I only did, you know, like I said, I joined the military in 80. 
got out in 86, then just before the Gulf War started, it seemed to me I it was playing with my head. I did all this training, you know, we, you know, I did all this training and I never put it to use. Just before the Gulf War started, I, joined, I decided to join back up because I, I felt like it was in my blood. I need to see combat. I need to see, you know, feel what they felt. And I, you know, and I went to the first Gulf War, you know, that's a storm, that's a shield, that's a storm. And I did. How many years did you serve? Well, I, I served, like I said, overall, I did 14 years. 14 years. 14 years. But mm -hmm. most of my time, it was in their serve. But, you know, I did most of my training as a tanker, you know. Yeah. And it was wonderful. Like I said, I love getting greasy. I love the dirty. And it was like the diesel smell. It was like, to me, it was like, you know, you know I used to enjoy it. Yeah, and that's the reason they wanted me. I could have gone to other MOSs to do other jobs. Cause like I, I said, I was a tank, 1811 tank tanker. Then I joined the the 18A for um, tank engineer, that I could modify a tank, you know, do whatever to it, you know, and that's what I like. When when I went and. When I went to your home, it was one piece that you earned when you was uh, in the military that you was very proud to show me. And uh -huh. you was talking very highly about that piece. Can you talk to me about it? Yeah, you say a little bit about that. Okay, now I don't know where and, you got it. I think that piece is around here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah this one. Um, can you it's both. both. You yeah. could have both. Both. No, this is something, you know, to me, it was something silly. That it wasn't, you know, this is a certificate that was given to me by the Marine Corps. Um, it was saying that, you know, I went through, you know, it, it, it just, it wasn't just one reason why they gave it to me. It was overall different, different stages that I did. Because I was, uh, you know, like I I was like senior man to my other guys, and they listened to me. And when me, like always, when I didn't want other people to be in danger, I used to do it myself. Or, you know, this was given to me, you know, in the Gulf War, not just for one reason. They just saw me like I was a gung ho, you know. To me, I a silly, silly guy, you know, that why are you doing that, you know? But that was me, that's my nature. I look, it was like a high, you know, like a journaling junkie. And anything dangerous, I love doing it. It was very, thank you. And it, it was very significant. It was signed by, no, approved by the, by the president. No, it, it was, no, uh, it was approved by the commandant of the Marine Corps. The uh, you know, it was, you know, had to go through ranks from the little sergeant that recommended me to the lieutenant to the captain, also on, you know, over the ranks. And it was something that I did, you know, that it was, to me, it was funny. Now it's, it was funny that, you know, what I did. But it's, this could be, could have been given to any of my buddies. You know, I feel like I wasn't, at first when they gave it to me, I felt bad. Because why they give me this and why not my buddy that was standing right next to me? And he had the same, that he deserved it as much as me. But, you know, for some reason, uh, they gave it to me. And, uh, you know, I'm proud that I got it. Now that I'm older and recognize the danger that I went through, that I did when I was younger, now, you know, you know it, now it, you know, I see, you know, to me, it was something nice. Me going through, for, you know, this, all, all this saying that, you know, uh, you know I didn't, like I said, this is not just one story. This is over a couple of stories that when, when uh, the Desert Storm, the first story started, and yeah, like when, Ka, you know, Cap G started, one of my tank commanders, his tank broke down in the desert. 
me being an engineer and I don't have more experience, they left me in the desert, middle of the desert, like hundreds of miles with no one around. No one around. And I, they gave me four guys to repair. You know, if you've seen a tank, a track, because the tank commander tank, he took our tank and I stayed it with his tank to fix it. When Kafji, you know, if you heard of the, when Kafji, the, when they, when they attacked uh, Saudi Arabia from uh, Afghanistan, the, the Iraqi, we was all alone. And any job, this is quali as a qualify as a job that would last two or three days to fix the tank. And approximately, I did it in two hours in some month. And you know, when we get attacked, artillery coming, and we had to fix the tank no matter what. You do, you know, you forget about the book, but the way you know they teach you in school. You do it, you know, you modify it to do it then and then, you know. And that's one of the reasons, you know, they gave me then another reason it was like when, you know, when they first invaded Kuwait, we went to take it back. I was one of the leading tanks in front of the mines, run, you know, running through the minefield. I seen some tanks get split, you know, as the tank is and get blown up. But we was with the M60s, old tanks, not the M1s. And we had good, you know, I was silly, I was trying to, everybody, I was the first one in line and everybody had to, you had to follow me because, you know, there were mines all over and I was maneuvering my tank all over the minefield till we get to the clear. And you know they decided. You know, they gave me a uh, letter coming. Like, he was driving like a Latino. The tank. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was maneuvering. You know, watching. You know, and you could see it. And you know, I remember that day. It was when it was cold, and uh, oil fields were on fire, and we just trying to drive it, trying to drive around the minefield after they threw the line chargers and a couple of the, you know, after they throw the line chargers, you got tank plows plowing and they hit a couple of mines. You could see them tanks just lift, being lifted up like little toys. No, this is right here. His name is Henry Kilcourt. He was my sergeant uh, right here. He was my my first gun, gunnery sergeant, and you know me and him, he was the, we were the only two Latinos in our whole unit. And me and him, you know, he was, we was close. We was, you know, I talked to him, you know, we always go do it when I see him. It's been a while, a while, a couple of years, maybe three or four years, I haven't seen him. And, you know, we went through it. We talked to each other, you know, we thought, yeah, you because know, in the Marine Corps, when you go to battle and you are a tanker, you got five, seven minutes to li of living, and then you know that stick to your hand, in your head, and you know, all you want to do is survive. And, you know, taking care of your buddies, uh, you know, like this pretty. You know, like after I came back from the Gulf War, you know, it wasn't that I did that much battle. You know, I. We fired the tank, we did what we had to do. But, you know, it, it was, I'm proud of what I did, very proud. The, the story he told me that out of his company, only three survived, I mean, he was one of them, out of the whole company. And he was shot twice. And he, they declare him as company commander on, of three guys, because everybody else got killed. And I think he got the, he, he was one of the first Puerto Rican to get uh, the awarded, uh, you know, in the Marine Corps, the first Latino or Hispanic to get the uh, Silver Star for, you know, 
in the Marine Corps. I'm not sure, you know, I'm, don't quote me, but he, I remember, he never talked to nobody about it. He never mentioned it. But when he found out that, I, you know, his nephew joined the Marine Corps, he was so proud of me. And, you know, he, you know I, I got attached, very attached to him. Um, what has been the best story that you have while you was um, the best one? Best one? That when you was in the military, the best experience, like if you if you went to to a site or like something like amazing happened to you. No, well, I don't got thing. much. You got so many of them. Yeah, I can't <laughs> count. You know, especially my buddies. You know, like when in the Marine Corps, to me, there we are a unit of brothers. There ain't no color, ain't no race. When, we join, you, when you join the Marine Corps, you're green, no matter who you are. Hispanic, black, white, there ain't no such thing as black, white, or Hispanic. You are a green. And that's what I've been taught in the Marine Corps. There ain't no color. Everybody's going to be treated the same. Bad. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah. <laughs> But yeah, you know, it's then you get attached to them guys so much. And, you know, it's like, you know, I wish, yeah, you know, like yesterday was the Marine Corps birthday, and I'm looking through Facebook, finding all my friends, I wanted to say hi, wishing, you know, the 235th year, you know, of the Marine Corps, and you, like I said, we are a band of brothers. We are. From the very first Marine back in 1775 to the last one that joined us yesterday. Mm. Well, um, during the bike uh, and like when I went to your house, I was like crazy from the moment I walked in and I thank your wife, which is here, and um, and all the contributions that you have done for the bike and what. When I talked to you and I said that I wanted you to participate, um, how has been the experience of you participating on, on the Balcon Criollo? It's, you know, it was it's nice, very nice. You know, I'm not, like I said, I'm not an outgoing person. I'm, I'm a little shy, only when I'm on stage playing. But right now <laughs> I'm a little shy. <laughs> but, you know, it's been, thank you, you know, make me feel good at least, you know, for participating with you, helping you out, because I want my fellow Latinos, you know, to, you know, feel good about what they are, you know. See where we come from. Don't forget where you can come from. You know, like I said, he said we were poor. He was poor when he started. We was very poor when we started. But, you know, we tried to get better. You know, that's the spirit you had to have. You know, start from the bottom, never give up, and continue forward. Mm -hmm. And never is enough. Family behind. Wow. Um, when you was away and the holidays, and how was, how you felt being away from home and away from your parents, especially your mom, because I know you're very close to her, especially in the holiday and the Far it was, land. it was hard. That's the to me that was the hardest part out of being in the military, staying away from people that you love. You know, it, it seems there ain't no words for, for explanation. You know, my mom, especially my grand, my grandmother. You know, Doña Felita, Felicita. I don't know, mm -hmm. Mama Fela. Sí. You, you met her a long time, her, yes. and she, you know she was crying for me. I remember her always, you know, she didn't know how to read or write, but she always had to tell, you know, she used to, I remember we used to have cassettes, you know, when I, you know, and we, they used to send, you know, you know, telling cassettes to send messages from the family, you know, and that's how I, you know, it was hard, you know, like my mother, like at one time, when back in the early 80s, when I first joined, 
And um, we was, um, my brother was in the Navy, my other brother was in the Marine Corps, and all three, we almost got sent to Beirut at the same time. And for some reason, because I was the youngest, my brother was in the Navy in, in the yard. My brother was, he was in, I can't really say, but he was like in the Special Force in the Marine Corps. Couldn't give no detail where he was or nothing like that. And, and I was being sent. My mother, she, I remember writing letters to her and she just, my father, back early, he was the one that kept my mother being strong, you know, because he knew what I, they was going to, even though, you know, we signed up as volunteers. We signed up. It wasn't, we didn't get drafted. We just joined because we wanted to. And it was hard for the family, very hard. But especially my first year being away from the house, you know, without arroz, on Alicuela and all that, <laughs> oh, that was the hardest part, you know, being, you know, the, the, food. the food, 